Hello, until now, we have seen various ways to simulate our PLC program, which are using force table, sim table, and factory I.O. In this video, I'm going to connect factory I.O. to my PLC, and test a simple program. In the next video, we'll do a project with that. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to inform you about all the great content, I have been releasing on the PLC Goods YouTube channel, which includes industrial automation PLC programming, HMI and microcontroller based developments. My name is Syed Reza, and if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell, to receive the latest and the greatest content, I will be posting through the channel. Alright, let's start. I have an S7 1200 CPU, and can be connected to factory I.O. Factory I.O. has a graphical help, to show how it can be connected to PLCs. Let's see the necessary setting for S7 1200 CPUs. Its requirements are Siemens Edition or Ultimate Edition, S7 1200 or 1500 PLC, and TIA Portal. Then, we can see steps for setting up communication between computer and PLC. So, let me create a new project in TIA Portal. Well, the next step is configuring PLC in TIA portal. Like previous videos, I select configure a device, and click on add new device. As you know, here, I can find and insert my CPU manually, based on its article number. But there is an easier way. Select unspecified CPU 1200. Later TIA portal will detect our PLC automatically. Now, we are on TIA portal's project view. This message says, specify your CPU manually, or detect, the connected PLC automatically. Now, I select the connection type and click on search. Well, TIA portal has detected my PLC. I can click here to flash its LEDs. Now, let's click on detect. As you see, the detected PLC is now on the device view. Pay attention, after these steps, if you are adding a PLC that is not in the same subnet as your computer, you will be prompted about assigning a new IP address to the network interface, if this window is appeared, click on yes. Well, in the next steps. Some properties of the inserted PLC need to be modified, to allow communication with factory I.O. First, we'll need the IP address of the connected CPU. So, let's go to its properties panel. My CPU address is 192.168.1 and 23, which can be changed. The main point is, all devices that are in the same network, must have a different IP address. Now, pay attention to step 10 which says, P 
PLC physical inputs use by default the first memory addresses of input image memory. For factory I.O. to be able to write sensors values to input image memory, you must offset the input addresses, we recommend an offset of 10. Let's do the step in TIA software. When I change this number, the physical input addresses will start from 10, instead of 0. With this setting, I will use I0.0 to I0.9 in factory I.O., and consider the next addresses for physical inputs. Because an input of PLC, cannot accept two values from two sources, which are physical inputs, and factory I.O. Otherwise, the values written by factory I.O. will be overwritten as the state of physical inputs, is copied to input image memory. Finally, we must give full access to the PLC memory. Let me do these settings in TIA. Alright, this setting is for PLCs with firmware, lower than V4.0. Now, our settings must be transferred to CPU. Let me do that, like previous videos. Alright, settings have been transferred to my CPU. Also, we need some settings in factory I.O. Let me show them. First, I select drivers from file menu. Then, I must select Siemens 1200 1500. Then click here, make sure the corrected PLC has been selected. And also here, the IP address of the selected PLC must be inserted correctly. Now, factory I.O. can connect to my PLC. Now, let me write a simple program in TIA. I want to use an SR instruction to turn on or off an output. To turn on the motor, I want to use the first switch, which is connected to the physical input of my PLC. So, I can select and drop its address in my program. Similarly, I can use other physical inputs. But let me show you, how virtual inputs can be used from factory I.O. To stop the motor, I can use the next physical input, but I want to use the stop push button, which has been inserted in the factory I.O. So, here, I can connect the inserted stop push button to this PLC address. Pay attention, 
these addresses are different from physical input addresses. So, to stop motor, I use the address, which has been used in factory I.O. Alright, let me define suitable tags for input addresses, and complete the program. Well, this program can turn on or off the Q0.0 output, which is the first physical output. Also, I can use this output to turn on my belt conveyor which has been inserted in factory I.O. Now, let's load this program to my PLC. Well, it needs to stop the CPU. The program has been transferred, now, I can start the CPU. If I selected no action, the CPU remains off. I can start and stop the connected CPU from here. Now. Let's start CPU, and activate program monitoring. Alright, let me have a better view of my program, factory I.O., and the connected PLC. Well, let me change this contact to a normally closed contact because the stop push button in factory I.O. is normally closed. Now, I have to download the modified program to PLC. Let me test the program. As you see, based on my program, I can turn on the first output, with the first physical switch. If I open the first switch, the output remains on. Also, the output turned on the belt conveyor in factory I.O. To stop the PLC output, or the belt conveyor which is connected to the output, I must click on the stop push button in factory I.O. Alright, in this video, we have seen, how we can connect factory I.O. to 1200 CPU. Its process can be used for S7 1500 CPUs too. Also, we have seen how we can use physical inputs, or connect virtual equipment in factory I.O., to S7-1200 CPU. In next videos, we'll prefer to use factory I.O. to simulate our programs, instead of physical switches. Because of its graphical view, and also various equipment which can be used in factory I.O. Thanks for watching my content. If you have any question on this topic make sure you leave them in the comment section below, and if you can spend a few seconds of your time liking as well as sharing this video, if you enjoyed it, that will mean a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for the channel such as what kind of hardware or software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that in the comment section. See you next time. Bye bye.